Hello, today we're going to be making a jewelry dish with air dry clay. My name is Ladera McKinnon, a teaching artist at Clay Works in Charlotte, North Carolina. This video is presented by Clay Works in Charlotte, North Carolina and sponsored by Culture Blocks, a community partnership between ASC, Charlotte Makerberg Library, Makerberg County Park and Recs to bring arts and culture experiences closer to where residents live. Culture Blocks is funded by Mecklenburg County. What came in your kit is air dry clay, acrylic paint, a skewer, and a paintbrush. What you will need from home, a workspace, a small dish of water, and items found around the house for texture. To get started, we are going to pinch off one third of our clay. With the larger part, we are going to make a slab. Slab, a flattened or rolled out piece of clay. When I'm flattening out my slab, I am pressing the clay outward so it gently starts to form the shape of a face. When I am flattening out my slab, I am flipping it every now and then so it doesn't stick to my surface that I'm working on. You want your slab to be about the thickness of your pinky. Once you're done flattening out your slab, we're going to start to smooth out any cracks and clean up the edges of your slab. You're going to put one finger in your water. You don't need a lot of water to smooth out your slab. We are just smoothing out the edges and reshaping as we go. If you want your edges to be a little bit rounder, this is the time to do that. Once you're done shaping your slab, you're going to move it out of your way so you can work on your coils. Coil, a rolled out rope of clay like a worm or a snake. Roll out your clay, you're going to squish it in your hand like a thick worm and then we're going to roll it on the table or in your hand as if you were cold. You're going to do a full 360 when you roll, starting from the center and work your way out. When rolling your coil, you want them to be the same thickness as your pinky. We're going to continue to use the rest of the clay as coil. So go ahead and roll out the rest of your clay. Next, we are going to attach your coil by scoring and slipping. Score and slip. Score, the process of incising surface of wet or leather hard clay and the cross hatching pattern before applying slip and joining clay. Slip is watered down clay used for joining clay together. For this project, we are using water. I am scoring the edges of my slab. I'm going back and forth, putting an indention into the clay. Now I'm going to do the opposite on my coil. It's a little bit easier to score your coil if you just go the long way. Once I do that, I am going to tap on a little bit of water, not rubbing, just tapping. Then I'm going to put the two textures together, starting from the top and working my way down around the dish. If your coil isn't long enough, that's okay. We're just going to pinch off a little bit of another coil and then slip and score it on. And then you're going to smooth out the edges so it blends in. Once you've attached your coil, we are going to reinforce it by smoothing out the seams with just a little bit of water. You're also going to have your hand on the sides for support so it can stay round. Now that we have the dish, it's time to make the face. 
You are going to think about what you want your face to look like. You can even sketch this out before drawing it into your clay. Since I have an idea what I want my dish to look like, I'm going to go ahead and sketch out my face. Don't be afraid to think outside of the box. I am going to be doing a wink face. And when you're sketching out your face, you don't want to go too deep into the clay. I'm also cleaning off the sharpen of my stick as I sketch out my drawing. Next it's time to attach our details. The coil that we are going to be using for our details, we are going to roll it out a little bit thinner. And then we're going to score and slip it. I'm going to start from the center and work my way out. I'm attaching the coil right on top of the lines that I drew. This is when you want to take your time and gently attach. Since the coil is a little too long, I am going to pinch off the extra piece of clay. I'm going to continue to work my way from top to bottom, adding different pieces of details. For the people of my eye, I'm going to roll a small ball in my hand, then I'm going to flatten it, and then slip and score. After that, I'm going to continue to do small coils on the lines that I want to coil on. With your last coil, you're going to slip and score it around the edge, remembering to tap on just a little bit of water when I attach. When you have attached that last coil, you're just going to go ahead and clean up any imperfections that you do not want on there. Anything you want to be smooth, and then we're going to let this dry for about 24 hours. Now that your dish is completely dry, we are going to start to paint. The key thing with this project is starting largest to smallest, meaning I am going to paint the largest surface first which is my face. I want a... Since your face is the largest area, you're gonna mix more than enough of paint so you don't run out when you're painting a large area. I'm gonna start by painting the inside of my dish blue. 
It's okay if it gets a little bit messy. This is just your first layer. Since this is a larger area, I am using longer brush strokes. This will help you cover more area in a shorter period of time. Once you've painted the face area, you can decide to change the color to paint the outside and the side. I'm continuing to paint mine blue. Once you've painted the largest area, you're going to let your disc dry for about 5 minutes. Now it's time to paint the facial features. These can be any color that you would like, purple, orange, pink, brown, green, whatever your heart desires. I personally like to choose colors as I paint. Whatever color that I'm attracted to, that's the color that I will use. Since these areas are a little bit smaller, this is when I'm going to use smaller brush strokes. When painting the iris of the eye, I'm going to water down my black paint just a little so my eye color won't be so harsh.
Now it's time to do a second layer on my dish. I'm going to take my time to get any crevices that I've missed or that paint has overlapped. Now that I'm finished with the second layer in the inside of my dish, I'm going to paint the outside. Lastly, if there's any carvings that you would like to do into your clay, just use the sharpen of your stick to draw some lines into your clay. For example, my lashes need to be reinforced again. So I'm going to use the sharpen of my stick to carve into the clay. And there you have it, how to make a jewelry dish out of air dry clay. Thank you for watching this video and thank you to our partners.